Cheshire East uh, and our partners are local authorities, HEIs, Children's Trusts and an NHS Trust as well. So just a bit about housekeeping. Can I have the next slide please Adam? So yeah if you can mute your microphone um, as many of you have and turn off your camera that would be great and please do put questions in the chat if you have any. Uh, we are recording this session because it will be a resource and put on our website. Um, if you need captions, then you can click those three dots at the at the top. Um, and there will be an opportunity to give us some feedback as well at the end of the, the session and for us to answer questions as well. And then there's just a little note if you have any problems with the chat function or or sound. So really pleased to welcome you to this session on action learning and social work and really pleased that Christine Abbott uh, is with me today and Christine is an absolute expert in, in action learning so she's going to, to lead most of the, the session and there'll be a, a short exercise as well, a short action learning exercise to do uh, towards the end. Okay so over to Christine. Thank you, Cheryl. Lovely to be working with you again um, after all these years, isn't it? Two years. And lovely to be with everybody else uh, in the in the room as well. I've just come from um, running action learning sets for newly qualified social workers. So um, uh, I'm very much into social work today. Um, I'm just thinking, Cheryl, from what you said earlier about the recording, when we actually do the exercise, it's probably better we switch the recording off for that part of it. Yes, absolutely. Just, yes, we'll do that. Just so, just while I remember that, because um, obviously that wouldn't want to be, yeah, um, on the on the recording. Mm -hmm. Okay, so action learning. I don't know how much all of you know about action learning, but I'll just give you a little bit of background. I, I guess the person who's known to be the founder of action learning is a guy called Reg Revens. Uh, and in fact, he actually coined the term action learning in the 1970s. It can be strongly argued that it goes back a long lot further than that. In fact, back to the 1600s, um, because it came from an idea of Quakers uh, about clearness committees and being clearer about your challenge or your problem with the support of other people. So in, in a sense, that was its original, that was the original core of um, where action learning came from. Reg was a research physicist at the Cavendish Laboratory in Cambridge. Um, he was also uh, had Quaker roots. He, he, he belonged the as a member at Cambridge Quakers. He actually resigned that post in the 1930s when it became apparent that uh, nuclear war um, would happen. And uh, as a research physicist, he didn't want to be involved in development of uh, nuclear weapons. Um, he was quite an athletic chap. He represented the British Olympic team um, as a long jumper in the 1920s. Having resigned from being a research physicist, he then went into education, healthcare, management education, primarily in the mining industry. Um, he was the first profession, professor of leadership and management, then called industrial administration in the UK in Manchester. And he left there when, um, you can tell he was quite a principled man, he left there in the 1960s when universities in the UK decided to import the Masters in Business Administration, the MBA, into UK universities. And he was very anti that, and you'll probably tell why as I as we carry on talking, um, he actually called, he, he said it stood for moral bankruptcy assured, so he wasn't afraid of being outspoken. Sources of his inspiration, I've mentioned Quakerism. Um, there was also two other things that inspired him uh, in terms of action learning. One was his father. His father was a marine investigator for the Titanic. And he once asked his father, what did he learn from that? And he, he his father told him he learned the difference between wisdom and knowledge. Wisdom from the experts 
uh, or sorry, the, the, the sort of knowledge from the experts, the marine designers, the engineers of the time, but also the difference between that and the wisdom of the sailors who actually sailed the seas. The people who were uh, listened to boats creaking with the, with the heat and with the cold that expanded and contracted because they were made of wood. So he, they failed to listen to the people who were wise about sailing on the sea when they built a boat. Um, so this thing about speaking truth to power goes right the way through to the heart of action learning. How do you allow doubt ascend to create wisdom from above, as Reg Evans would say? So it's 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 that ability of an action learning set to allow people to speak about the real challenges of being in practice, as I've been listening to today, and allowing the doubts about their practice, allowing their thoughts about being a social worker to arise so that wisdom may come from above. One organisation um, said uh, to Mike and me many years ago that um, doubt ascending in our organisation causes retribution from above rather than wisdom. Um, and sadly, that's the case in many organisations. So an interesting man um, and an inspiration for many other writers about learning and about leadership and management. Should we go to the next slide, Adam, please? So this is a quote from him, which I guess sums it up for me uh, in terms of this power dynamic that's presence in action learning. When doctors listen to nurses, patients recover more quickly. If mining engineers pay more attention to their men than to their machines, the pits are more efficient. As in athletics and nuclear research, it's neither the books or seminars from which managers learn much, but from the here and now exchanges about the operational job in hand. And you could change some of those titles. You could talk about um, professionals. It's not books or seminars that professionals learn much, but from the here and now exchanges. So that thing about, um, I mean, you're at a virtual conference today, but when you're at a, a conference in a building with people in it, um, like we used to, then often people will go away and say how much they learned from talking to colleagues in the coffee breaks, in the lunch break, over the table. So that here and now exchange is about the work that we do that's so important and action learning, learning capitalises on. So next slide, Adam, please. So what did he call it? How did he describe it? Well, he didn't very often. Um, he was quite reluctant to put a label on the idea, um, but this is one of the very few descriptions he gave it, where he said it was about human development at all levels, in all cultures and for all purposes today, is that a set or a small group of, and I love this phrase, comrades in adversity, striving to learn with and from each other as they confess failures and expand victories. So this idea that we're all in it together, we're comrades in adversity. So my three groups of uh, social workers today who've been um, working together and they've been striving to learn with and from each other as they both, not confessed failures, but to actually um, talk about the real challenges of their practice but also to, to celebrate the successes and learn from the success. So we've learned from the successes of those people. We've also learned from the challenges that they face as they're all comrades in adversity meeting together. So next, Adam, please. There are some phrases that he uses um, quite often as some basic principles. So one of them here is he strongly argued that we don't learn anything until we do it, that the learning isn't fulfilled until we actually do something, we take action on it. And that we don't ever, if we do it in a mindful way, I would, I guess I would call it rather than sober and deliberate, 
we don't do anything in a mindful way without learning from what it is that we're doing. So this idea that yes, we can learn the principles. If I was learning to drive, I could I wasn't I wouldn't learn to drive by watching YouTube and reading the highway code. I actually start to really learn to drive when I get behind the steering wheel. And that would be true of any practice. Um, this, the newly qualified I've been with today are putting into practice their learning and uh, they're learning through the action that they're taking. And actually learning um, on the, uh, both in and on action. Adam, please. Yeah, um, he had lots of uh, formulas and equations, and perhaps that's not surprising, given his background as a physicist. And one of them was that the learning must equal or exceed the rate of the change around you. So this idea that there is an imperative on all of us to learn um, more than the change or the things that are going on around us. Adam, please. Uh, next one, um, that learning is both a combination of program knowledge. It's not saying that that's not important, that it is important, but it's combined with a questioning insight into the action that you take. So combining, you know, this is what I've learned. This is the program knowledge I've learned. But actually the learning comes from questioning that in a thoughtful and uh, reflective way from the practice that you take. And the next slide, please. Um, I'm going to try and help um, perhaps put it in the framework of uh, other forms of learning and supervision. And so I'm doing that under these different frameworks that, that I'm sure you've, you've all come across before. These three levels of learning, we learn how to implement things, we learn how to do things, we learn, having gone through that, how to improve what we do, and then we learn to innovate. Um, and if you think about, you know, apprentices in the past and uh, the master apprentice would be the one who uh, innovated. So they developed new ways of working with wood or with metal or um, uh, the, the, their apprenticeship in order to create something that was new. So this idea that we learn how to do something, we learn how to improve what we're doing, and then we learn how to innovate from what we're doing. And the four modes of learning, so we learn about things, we learn how to do things, we learn about becoming ourselves, and indeed in action learning terms, Reg Revens talks in his, in his books about a, a manager in Belgium who said, I, I want to learn to become an honest man. I learn about myself, but I also learn to achieve things with other people. So that's a framework that I'm going to use in terms of looking at where action learning sits. Adam? Um, OK, so let's look at the first one, just implementing. And we often do that through education. It's a very much an educational um, arm to this. <laughs> So we learn how to uh, about things. We do that by uh, recalling things that have happened, but recalling our learning, uh, maybe through an exam, maybe through a, a viva, maybe through um, talking to somebody at work. We learn about things. We're able to describe them correctly. We know what the rules and the procedures are. We learn how to do things in this implementation stage through education. We learn how to carry out existing procedures and processes correctly. We can put things into action through instructions. We learn to accept feedback on ourselves. We get a feedback from assignments that we put in when we're at university. We get feedback from uh, senior managers on what it is that we're doing and we develop with others our personal development plan to help us to meet any gaps um, and we we just we recognize we go into a team we recognize and respect other norms of behavior that are in that team um, we know what the roles are in a team we know what's expected of them so we're just we're in that implementation stage 
and that happens through education and training um, rather than action learning. Adam, I'm not used to having somebody turning the slides for me. It's very, um, <coughs> thank you, Adam. Um, the next stage would be improving. So uh, this idea that we, we, we now, we know what to do. We know what the rules and processes are. We know what we have to do, but now we want to improve our practice. And often that happens through supervision, hopefully, but also that can happen with action learning. So we learn about things by reflecting on the experiences we've had. We make meaning from them. We analyze the meaning from that. We start to think for ourselves and devise our own ideas and theories and hypotheses about our practice. And that's this critical reflection, being critically reflective about the things that we do. We learn to do things because we start to handle a, a wider variety of tasks. We decide on our own priorities in doing that. And we actually review our practice all the time in terms of how could we improve that? How could I do that a bit differently? How could I get a better outcome um, from that review? And instead of just accepting feedback from people in a very passive way, the, the assignment that you handed in to your tutor and the tutor marks it and gives you the feedback, we actually actively seek to obtain feedback from people. And we might do that through talking to clients. So social workers actually seeking feedback from their, the people that they're working with, from their colleagues um, and pulling that together. So it's not just waiting for somebody to give you feedback. It's actually asking for feedback from your supervisor, seeking it. Um, so you're learning about your own personal development. You're learning about how you develop best. Nobody is telling you what to do. You're learning from what you know about yourself. And that happens very much in an action learning set, as it would do in supervision. And then learning about helping through helping colleagues and teams um, develop ideas uh, challenging some of the norms and the standard ways of doing things. Um, we learn to improve systems in that way. And I think that happens both in supervision and action, less so in education, less so in a training session, more, much more so in, in either supervision or action learning. Adam? And then finally, the innovation stage. Um, and this I think is, is the, the domain of action learning. So you learn about things through actually understanding the interconnections between the parties present in the action learning set. You learn about interconnectedness. Um, you learn and you, you actually start to be, suspend your judgment, particularly if you're in an action learning set which is mixed from lots of different professions. So if you're in an action learning set with a um, maybe um, a nurse, uh, one I ran not that long ago was um, nurse, social worker, consultant, medical consultant, paramedic, um, housing officer um, and a, somebody who was uh, administration in the hospital. Um, and th what they were looking at was actually innovating services for people who'd suffered a stroke and they work together. So they were able to see that bigger overview. They learned about those, you know, that larger um, uh, sort of environment. They learned about the interconnectedness of what they did um, and how one action influenced another's. So they had to suspend their judgment. They had to critically reflect on alternative perspectives and, and assumptions as they were looking at innovating this service. They learned to do things by seeing the differences between them and actually openly acknowledging the differences between a medical model, a social model, for example. They learned to work by working creatively with that range of stakeholders. And in fact, they actually brought in um, both a carer and a patient 
um, into that set at one point to test ideas and to create new ways of thinking about um, services. And they learned about themselves. They learned about what is my perspective? How do I react when, a med when I'm faced with being in a, with a medical consultant? Is that different? What are my perceptions? What are my uh, assumptions about that role? Um, and so it helps me to understand and be really critically reflective on not just my own practice, but the environment in which I work in. And we do it with others. So we, in a set, we're working with other people. So we're recognising that the we're learning by being with a group of other individuals um, who may be of different professions and have different perspectives. They work in a different domain to our own domain. OK, Adam. So uh, when and where, and Cheryl's going to um, join in on this, um, often action learning sets happen when somebody's in a new role. So you might get my first action learning experience was working in a set that was set up by the health, health authority, Yorkshire Health Authority. I was working in the NHS and it was for uh, newly appointed either directors in HR, OD or senior managers in um, OD. We were all in a new role. We all came from different organisations and we needed to support each other. I've already mentioned I've just done three action learning sets with ASYEs uh, today. Um, so it's uh, used a lot with ASYEs um, and supporting them in their first year in practice. Projects like the stroke care project I just mentioned, multi-agency working where issues and challenges need a multi-agency approach. Um, I think, uh, Cheryl, you're going to talk about the voluntary sector, aren't you? Yeah, so, so uh, yeah, a few years ago, um, I did some work with um, NQSWs in different um, voluntary organisations within a city. So this was where um, there were perhaps only one or two NQSWs sort of working uh, within an organisation. So um, we brought them together and they sort of from adults and children's different you know, completely different organizations uh, and they worked on on practice um issues and challenges um so i remember one really powerful um session where they did a constellation which is a uh, one method of um, action action learning where um the participants the group members actually act out well they, they sit in positions to demonstrate how they may may feel in a sort of situation so there was one nqsw who was who was acting sitting as a i think it was a, a mother uh, you know, that he was working with um and it was particularly challenging and it helped him when he was questioned about how he was feeling in this sort of situation. So the social worker was in another position, children were in another position, other organisations were spaced out around the room to, to understand the, the mother's perspective. And he found it really powerful and, uh, and helpful. Uh, shall I talk about the other, yeah, um, yeah. The other example? Um, so I was involved, uh, a few years ago, working with principal social workers on a principal social worker development programme when I was working in, in Skills for Care. And that was a development programme which included um, some core modules, but also um, action learning. So the principal social workers from around the country came together um, to, to explore a, a range of, of challenges. And quite often they were looking at their professional role because because as you know principal social workers uh, the role is is quite different in, in different organizations so sort of exploring and, and clarifying their role um, thinking about how to embed pre practice and practice frameworks within their organizations as effectively as possible um, thinking about relationships and dynamics, particularly multi-agency, actually. There's some principal social workers who are working across health and, and social care. So exploring all of those 
uh, those challenges and, and thinking about how to um, you know to address some of those you know the actions that they could take to uh, to help them to work through those uh, those challenges. I was thinking about um, work in the humanitarian sector um, and action learning is often used there in terms of helping to transfer tacit knowledge um, and in ALMAP did a big piece of work we did with them on looking at that and, and you can actually download the report from their website so that's A-L-N-A-P um, the, there was one piece of work as an example that I did in with uh, Médecins Sans Frontières um, and they have people who go out and do projects overseas so they um, they come in and they uh, they may be seconded maybe from the NHS if it's in this country or other places as a medic and they go over and they may spend three months in a in a a war zone or anywhere else that MSF tend to operate and then they come back and go back to their normal everyday job and the same is true of managers, project managers. So one of the challenges that they had was that both of those people would come back and where did the knowledge about working in that particular environment go? Well it went with them it didn't get transferred in to the organisation. They weren't capturing the tacit knowledge that was gained by those workers on the ground. So we had um, action learning sets where we had both the project manager and the chief medical person in three different settings. So one was in a um, in a, in a country where there was great conflict, another was in a country uh, where actually it was Ebola, um, and another one in a country where there had been a, a natural disaster. And they were managing um, the services there. And we brought them together. It was done virtually, uh, obviously, but we brought them together to help understand what the learning that they were gaining from working in those environments and actually really challenging and supporting each other to learn and to capture the learning. And we trained both um, a project leader from their headquarters and a medical leader from their headquarters as facilitators. So they would work with them to really capture that knowledge of what it was like. So the next project manager and the next chief medical officer who went in were not having to learn everything all over again and that could be everything from um, the way people honoured the dead, um, the way that they uh, their faith or their belief systems worked and in, in, a, in particularly traumatic situations. Uh, so action learning was used in the humanitarian sector and is still used to capture the tacit knowledge um, that you gain from working in quite difficult and challenging circumstances. And it's used internationally, and I guess you've just probably just guessed that uh, from what I've said about working uh, with that organisation, but it is used all over the world um, and used widely in a lot of different situations. So I've had the privilege of working in Syria um, with action learning before the recent troubles in a lot in China, uh, Japan, South America, North America, in Europe, um, in oh, everything for mainly health and social care, I have to say, but also in other types of organisations where it's used and, and often in times when people perhaps think I, I just don't know what to do next um, in that situation um, and worked with groups of people uh, in and Cheryl and Adam and I were talking about some of those experiences only last week um, working on the flavelas on in Rio de Janeiro or working with earthquake and tsunami victims and social workers and healthcare workers after this uh, in Japan, uh, those situations where action learning helps people to 
come together to take action but also to learn from what it is that they're doing and often that's learning about the power dynamics um, that are going on in in different uh, parts of the system that relational aspect um, of action learning so it's it's very wide it's very widespread it's not just used in ASYE years in social work it's actually used in in a, a lot of different situations Go on to the next slide, Adam. OK, so what does it look like? For those of you who've never been in an action learning set, what does it look like? Well, this is a typical action learning set process. Um, so the first thing you would do when you've got your group together um, each time um, would be to do a general catch up, to get grounded back into the set, to remind ourselves of the relationships that we have with those people in the set so we do a general sort of catch up on what's happened and then report any progress of action since the last set so the um, ones I've been to doing today they're fairly short they're only two hours um, so the first thing we do is look at the two cases we looked at last time the person learned from that what did they what did the worker actually learn from taking the action that they said they were going to take? Um, and people ask them questions and they unpick it and they were able to reflect on the action that they took or the action they didn't take and the importance of that and what they learned themselves from that. And then the next stage would be to decide, well, who's going to present today? So. In a two hour set, um, two other people. Uh, decided that they were going to present their challenges uh, of cases that they're working on and they present it. People ask them questions to help them become clearer about the process. Cheryl's also hinted that there are lots of different ways in which you can do that and Cheryl talked about constellations and there are lots and lots of different techniques that you can use to help people reflect and question um, the case that they're working on or the issue that they're working on and then at the end of that we review that the individual reviews it the group reviews it thinks about what actions are going to take place next what are they going to commit to doing as a result of the questions that they've had what insight have they had and what are they going to do next and the group also does a review of the group at the end and that's the process that we work through um, each action learning set. That's what it looks like. Adam? Um, we're going to try it out uh, in a moment. Um, but I do want to, we would always set ground rules um, for working in this way. Inevitably, you'll all be thinking, well, this is a really, it can be very, very, it has to be a safe environment where people trust each other. And so ground rules are really important. We haven't got time in this quick run through of action learning uh, today to negotiate ground rules, but we are going to be looking at a challenge that somebody's going to bring us in a moment to the group. Um, so I'll 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 set the ground rules for this on this occasion. It's not something I would normally do, but I would ex I would ask you to keep this confidential. Um, in the sense that uh, we don't talk, any of us talk about the individual who's brought the problem and the challenge that they've raised um, in this group. That everybody in this group is equal. Uh, nobody has more power than anybody else. Cheryl and I will con control the process, but it doesn't mean to say we have any more power than anybody else in the room that we take responsibility for ourselves, that we have a commitment to doing this and helping the person to who's volunteering to gain some insight for the problem that they're bringing. Um, it may be that we take notes. I'm, I'm a terrible note taker. I have to take notes. I have to draw things on bits of paper to help me remember and make sense of things. But those notes are um, if you do do that, we all commit to destroying those or not putting anything on that identifies the person or the organisation who's presenting. And that we're honest 
and that we're open with each other. And that means having respect for ourselves and, and for other people. And I would also um, ask uh, you to remember that we all speak in jargon sometimes and to uh, be aware of that when we're either asking questions or when the presenter is actually explaining something. I'm probably the only non-social worker in this group. Um, I've worked with a lot of social workers, but I still don't know all the jargon that's used. So um, for the sake of me, if not everybody else, if uh, people would be aware of that. OK, so next slide, please, Adam. So we're going to use something really. Oh, somebody else, somebody called SM says that they're not a social worker either. So uh, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so the impact question method is probably the one we use right at the beginning of when we form an action learning set because it's it's relatively straightforward it's um and it's it's fairly quick to use i've seen this used at the end of shifts i've seen it used in team meetings it doesn't have to be an action learning set it could just be something that um requires a bit of intense reflection um, for maybe 10 minutes. So it's it's relatively quick. So that's why we've chosen it for this particular purpose. So what we need, though, is a volunteer who's prepared to bring a challenge that they're facing right now, something that they perhaps would feel better if. Um, and yeah, thank you, Adam. Uh, we're stopping the recording.